Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with ShopSaber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. We have a really great video for you. What we wanted to do was to show you the process of going from an idea that you might have for a product to actually building it with a CNC router. That process usually starts with the idea, then some type of sketching, the development of a solid model, and when you're finished, you actually make the product and validate it on the machine. And the machine we're going to be using is absolutely my favorite CNC router of all time. It's a Shop Saber IS series. Let's take a closer look at that. You know, I get asked quite often, how do you evaluate a machine tool design? It's really not that difficult. The first thing I look at is, is the frame structure and the material it's made from. First off, all Shop Saber CNCs are made from structural steel, all welded. So the base frame is one piece, the gantry is one piece, the gantry supports are one piece. But what really determines design are two things. One is our solid modeling software where we create our ideas and then we evaluate those from an engineering standpoint with finite element analysis. That's how we end up with these designs. That's why these machines work so well. Now the next part of the whole machine concept that I look at is motion control. And let's take a look at that. There are actually three parts of motion control. The first is linear axis. We actually use precision contour guide rails on all three axes. And if you notice also, these are actually mounted on mating surfaces. And the accuracy of the machining we do really has a big effect on how accurate our machines are. That's why they're so good. Now, what actually causes that motion is the second part of motion control. And that's really two components. One is the precision ball screws, and the other is the motors that turn them. Now, this is a really good time to talk about ball screws versus rack and pinions because we hear it all the time. Now, rack and pinions have backlash in it. Backlash is play. Ball screws don't. Ball screws are actually preloaded, and the preload takes the play out. So that's why the ball screws are more accurate. And it's really funny, sometimes somebody will try to tell you that the rack and pinion is just as good, and you look at their z-axis and it's ball screw because that's the one that has to be so accurate. Now, the way we actually control that are with Mitsubishi closed loop servos. And these actually have glass encoders on them, so they're really, really, really accurate. So altogether, that makes a tremendous mechanical package on the machine. Now, the third and final part of machine control is the controller itself. Let's go take a look at that. The Shop Saber IS machines feature our Shop Saber MMP controller. MMP stands for Mitsubishi Motion Platform. So we developed the whole control technology on a really robust rock solid control technology. But there's another part of machine control that's people related. And we really wanted to create an, an experience for the operator that was easy to use, easy to learn. We didn't want to create a monstrosity that you had to have an engineer to run. And we accomplished that first by starting with a Windows environment to put the control interface in because that lets you connect. You can run software on the controller, you connect to the network, lots of things like that. But we put all the operational functions on a single screen. It's just simpler for the operator. Now let's take a look at what you do to open a program. First off, I simply come up here and I say file. I select a file I want to run. It loads it. And if you notice, there's a little viewing button up here. When I click that on the screen over here, it shows what the file's going to be. So then you can look at the screen and see if that's what you thought you were running. Then once you hit cycle start, that's all that's involved. It's that simple to run the machine control. Now, let's take a look at the router spindle that's actually going to cut our parts. This machine has an HSD ATC spindle. ATC stands for Automatic Tool Changer, so this machine features an automatic tool changer. We offer these spindles in a number of different horsepower ratings based on what your needs are for your specific application. Now, the actual spindle is mounted to the tool plate. And if you'll notice, you see some parts on the sides here. These are stiffeners. And I'll tell you the story behind that. What we wanted to do was to create a method to increase the stability of a cutter with a taller gantry. And so we used our finite element analysis software and we had some ideas and we plugged them in there and one of them popped up and it looked really good. So the testing turned out. So the next step then was to evaluate that on a machine. And it worked out really, really good. We got really, really good edge finishes because of it. And so once we developed that, then we came back and we said, okay, let's perfect that. And that's what you see these cutouts. So we were able to achieve the same stiffness with less mass. Now, when you start talking about mass, there's another part of this design that has to do with mass, and that is the balancing cylinder. Now, you think about all of these things that are lifted and dropped down as a machine runs with the Z-axis. Well, mass is weight when you add gravity. Well, it's a lot easier to lower the head than it is to raise it. So we use a balancing cylinder that basically counteracts that. 
so that it's just as easy for the machine to raise the head up as it is to, down. What that actually equates to in real life is it actually gives you the ability to machine in 3D much, much faster. Now let's take a look at the table. One of the things you want to consider when you're looking at a machine tool is its work envelope. Now here's what that is. Work envelope is a 3D volume that specifies uh, where the machine can actually reach with a cutter. Now part of that is related to the table size or, or actually axis travel. And while this machine says 5 by 10, you'll find it's bigger than that. We pretty much make our tables about a foot wider than our spec. Now, the reason we do that is because, one, it lets you, occasionally you'll have a larger part that you need to machine. But on this particular model, it allows us, after the fact, to install a boring block on here. So if you decide you're going to do a lot of cabinet parts or closet parts, that boring block is a really nice addition. Now, uh, the other part of work envelope has to do with Z, and there's two parts of that. One is, what is the clearance under the gantry? And the other is, what is the Z-axis travel? And our machines basically have about four inches of Z-axis travel more than the gantry height. So that, if a part fits under the gantry, you can pretty much machine it on these machines. Now, let's look at the table itself. This is our Shop Saber vacuum table. This one happens to be made out of a treated MDF product we developed. We also offer it in phenolic and aluminum if you prefer that. Now if you look at the table you see these large ports. Now these are all hard to back into the plenum so that we don't have any vacuum loss. And then those are controlled by valves and then that plenum which is part of the machine frame itself then connects to the back with a four inch tube to the vacuum pump. So we get tremendous flow on these vacuum tables and what that equates to is small parts handle better. That's just how it works out. Alright now we've looked at the machine Let's go explore how you go from an idea to a product you made on the CNC router. You know, we kind of arrived at the demonstration that we wanted to do in this video in a, a, a bit of a roundabout way. For a long time, I've, I've been wanting to make something using Mosaic software that wasn't really a kitchen cabinet per se or a commercial cabinet. I wanted to make something a little bit different. And when you think about it, if I can go all the way down to the part level and, and modify parts and change shapes and all that, I can really make almost anything. So that's kind of was one of the ideas, all right? And so the product that we actually created is going to be a reloading bench, something to be in a garage, have a heavy top on it. Well, along the same line, we decided, well, it sure would be nice if we had a cabinet design for, the entire, for a garage based on the construction methods that we're going to use in this reloading bench. You know, a couple of years ago, I bought a set of really nice garage cabinets, I thought, at one of the home centers. And... Two or three years later, you know, the part, it's coming up, they're coming apart, the veneer's awful. And I, I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. And so, so we decided this was, was an entire project. So the first thing we're actually going to make in this product is the reloading bench. Now, the first step in that is to create a conceptual model in 3D to get an idea of, of what it's going to look like, what the proportions are, how we're going to do all the hardware. Let's take a look at how we did that. All right, let's take a look at the conceptual model that we started with. Well, first off, we wanted to use a countertop that which was real strong that we could buy. And so the top that you see on here is actually a, a glued up Baltic birch top that you can buy at a home center. The dimensions are uh, 48 by about 25 by an inch and three quarters thick. So that's a really a nice chunk of wood for, for a workbench top. Now, one of the things we wanted to do is to make sure that all the materials were real strong and our joinery was good, so we decided to use three-quarter inch Baltic birch plywood for all the parts. One of the reasons is it doesn't require edge manning. We can basically sand the edges and they look pretty good. All right, and then for joinery, we wanted to use blind dados and we wanted to reinforce it with conformat, so we create a really, really strong uh, system. Now, on the one that you see on the screen here, we've actually got casters on there. You can also put adjustable legs if you want. One of our ideas on adjustable legs was that when a cabinet's sitting in the garage, you can take a blower and blow out from under it, and you don't have to worry about uh, things getting trapped in. You don't have to worry about the cabinet uh, absorbing moisture. So that was the kind of the idea. Now let's look a little bit further inside here. Let's turn the drawers and doors off. When you see inside, first we have an adjustable shelf here, and then inside here, the three drawers are all meta boxes. So it's a really, really uh, nice drawer system. And we decided throughout our utility cabinet design, we probably use that. So that's the basis of, of where we got started and, and that's how we got the proportions to decide what we wanted to build. Then the next step was to actually bring this into mosaic and create this same object in mosaic, which, oh, by the way, will also make it parametric. Let's take a look at how we did that.
I've opened up Mosaic and I've loaded the job. Let's take a look at the actual room to start with. So it, we go to the room view and it would just get a 3D view of it. Here's what it actually looks like. We'll move that around a little bit, yeah. And you can see pretty much how we designed it. There's adjustable legs, there's the top, everything looks the same. Now let's drop back at the product level and actually look at a little bit more detail on how we did the insides. So I click on the cabinet, hit edit, and let's go to SketchUp. Okay, this is the actual box itself because the, the top, it, it goes on top of it. Here's what it looks like. Now, he, here's what I wanted to do with this design to make it look a little bit more unique. Now, remember, we're using Baltic birch, and we don't really want to uh, have to put edge banding on it. So the edges will be exposed, and they're finished. So that's part of the, the actual design. And then so I did insets on both ends and actually overlays on the top and bottom. So it's kind of a, it's going to be a really nice uh, setup. So that's where we started. Let's, let's x-ray this a little bit. You can see the insides. Now, I actually did a double partition here, and I did that because I wanted it stronger, and then also that creates uh, parts that don't have machining on the back side. You can see the actual materials in here for the drawers. And here's the holes for the adjustable shelves, all the uh, connection holes here. So that's basically uh, what we finished up with. All right, we'll close this. Now that we validated what we want there, then the next thing is to go to the manufacturing part. So let's talk about how we actually prepare this to run on a CNC router. As we progress along in Mosaic, we'll move down here in these tabs and we'll select the one on the end that says cut list because that has the optimizer on it. So we'll click optimize and we'll select the two materials and it'll override anything that was, was there before and this opens up the optimizer. Now optimizer is another word for nesting, so what it's going to do is it's going to figure out how to lay out all those parts on the materials, what it's going to do. Now, let's look at that. So we come over here, we select a material, we'll do the three quarter inch material first, and we hit the button that says optimize, and it's going to figure out how to lay the parts out on the sheet. And it comes up with two sheets. Now, if you notice, one of these parts is green, and that's because the machining is on the other side of the part. Well, that's not a problem because uh, our material is the same on both sides, so we'll just tell it to flip that. And you see you've got pretty good yield here. You see all the operation. It looks really, really good. Okay, then the next sheet, once again, we have a partition, so we'll flip that over. That looks real good. Now, sometimes you have extra material left on the sheet, so let's turn that into a remnant. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a rectangular scrap that I can deal with, and let's do the same thing here. So that'll leave me a piece for something else later that's, that's, that's manageable. Right, that looks really, really good. Then the next step, let's view all the patterns. The next step then is to generate the G-code that the machine uses. And that's all there is to it. Now re we'll repeat the same process for the half-inch material. Then we'll take these files, we'll send them by the network out to the machine control, and we'll go cut this reloading bitch. <laughs>
you know, I never get tired of watching these IS machines run because, you know, they've got a lot of power and you can really crank it up. Now, the edge finish on these parts is just impeccable, and that's cut at 1,200 inches a minute. Wow, they came out so good. You know, I always get excited about this. Now, I'm going to turn this over to the Shop Saber assembly team, and we'll be right back. The Shop Saber cabinet assembly team just brought our reloading bench back over, and it came out magnificently. You know, we started this as a concept of a product, and, uh, and we actually started out with a 3D model that we developed and then eventually put that into mosaic so it could be parametric. But it really, really came out nice. I really like the way Baltic Birch works because you can leave an exposed edge and when you put a finish on it, it's just beautiful and it actually becomes a part of the design itself. We also used a lot of hardware in this. We used Metabox drawer systems, we used leg levelers, uh, and we used Conformats, which are an unbelievably uh, strong system. So I'm really pleased with how that came out. But you know, one of the things I liked the most about this video was we used the Shop Saber IS machine. Now, Shop Saber ISs have a lot of power. So we called our friends over at Vortex Tool and had them send over a three flute compression spiral so we could really crank it up. So we set the feed rates at 1200, dialed up the RPMs to get the chip load we wanted, and we turned it loose, and it came out really, really, really nice. Well, I hope you liked the video. I had a blast doing this. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching. <laughs>